Hello, how you doing? It's Phil Thatch and I'm just outside of Finley Stadium and I've got something new today. This is the Nikon 180 to 600 lens and I'm going to be trying it out with soccer. You know, of course I bought this lens as a bird photography lens, but the first photographic opportunity that came up for me was to shoot this soccer match. So I broke out my old Nikon Z6. I don't have what most people would probably use with this lens right now. I don't have a Z8 or a Z9. I'm waiting and hopefully Nikon will make an APS-C camera with the autofocus system from the Z8 and the Z9. They've already announced the ZF, which is basically a Z6 in a retro body with the new autofocus system. So I'm hoping that eventually they'll come out with an APS-C camera like that. And you know, the, the autofocus system, and this is the original Z6, not even the Z6 II, it's not noted as being a great autofocus system, but I'm on the latest firmware. It does have human eye detect. And even before this camera had human eye detect, back in the earlier firmwares, I had pretty good luck with it shooting soccer. So I'm excited about trying out this beautiful, beautiful new lens, the 180 to 600 at a soccer match today. Let's go. All right, let's take a look at some shots with the 180 to 600. The first thing I photographed was this squirrel. This just when I got done making my little clip outside saying, hey, I'm at Finley Stadium. I found this squirrel that was just down from me on a rock and it was really dark. So I slowed my shutter speed down to one one hundredth. I needed about 480 millimeters to fill the frame on a full frame camera of this squirrel. And this is my first wildlife shot with the 180 to 600 Nikon lens. Then went inside and I swapped lenses with my good friend Ray Soldano. He's using his Z9 and he wanted to check out the 180 to 600. He normally shoots with a Sigma 120 to 300 f 2.8. So I made this shot that you're looking at with Ray's lens. And Ray had the Nikon 200 to 500, but he sold it because he wasn't satisfied with the autofocus speed. And I was worried he was going to say this one was too slow, but he said this one is much faster than the 200 to 500. So that is a good vote for this lens right there. Ray's a great sports photographer and you can find him on Facebook at Ray Soldano Photography. He's also on Flickr and there you can find great photos like this one right here that was also made this day. This is me in the second half sitting down to get a nice low angle with the Z6 and my new 180 to 600. All right, now let's get on to the sports photos. You can see my settings are up here. I think I shot 13200th all day long. I was underexposing by uh, sometimes a third of a stop and sometimes a, uh, two thirds and sometimes a full stop to try to save the whites of these uniforms. My ISO is automatic and it moved around from close to 100 to up to 1000 at times. This is a 520 millimeter shot f6.3 of a Chattanooga player and the, it was full sun. It wasn't super hot, it was in the mid 80s. And you can still see if you look at these players shoes, they are bokeh but they also you can see heat distortion. So that gave me some troubles today, but not as bad as sometimes when I've photographed when it's even hotter in the 90s and things like that. Here's a 490 millimeter shot of a couple of players. I love this, these rubber pellets in the field that you can see flying up. And the focus was working pretty good with the old Z6, even though I was not using face detect, as I'll show you here in just a minute. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and show you the focus settings that I used right now after we take a look at this 520 millimeter shot at f6.3, 13200th, and ISO 250. Let's look at the focus settings I used. Okay, for autofocus settings, this camera does have human face and eye detection. I think that started in firmware version two, and then they added dogs and cats in firmware version three. And I tried it out just for a little bit during warmups. And to turn that on, you set it here for auto area AF. And it does work on this camera, even though it's kind of an old camera, it does work at portrait distances. But when you're doing sporting distances where the human head is often very small in the frame, it doesn't work very good. So I went back to wide area large as my focus mode, which is what I used to use on this camera back before it had face and eye detect for humans. And I like to move it up just like there it is in the center. I like to move it up one click and then I'll try to put that box right on the chest area, right on the numbers of the player and hope that the eye is in focus. And it worked really well. Back to more photos now. Here's another shot. This one's all the way at 
1100 ISO. Another long distance shot, 560 millimeters. Thought it turned out pretty nice. This is my favorite shot of the day. I was sitting over in the corner of the field. As a matter of fact, let me show you right now where I was sitting. This match started at 11 a.m. and I found me a spot over by the wall with a banner behind me, keeping me in the shade. And because this lens has 600 millimeters to play with, I can still shoot, even though I'm fairly far back, I would normally sit a little bit closer. I can still shoot all across the field, which is crazy. There is no clouds or virtually no clouds in the sky, but it's not super hot. There is some heat distortion, but it only has taken effect maybe 60 yards away. So I'm able to get some pretty good shots with this setup. So as you can see, I was sitting right there in the corner of the field in the shade. It was wonderful. And this is Chattanooga player. I think she's the team captain number 13 and she has headed this shot right for the goal. Unfortunately, it was stopped, but it, was, it would have been really cool if this had been a goal, but it sure could have been, and it was a great effort by number 13. 350 millimeter shot at F6. Here's another shot of number 13, this time a 600 millimeter shot, and it's not that the lens is bad at 600 millimeters, it's with all the heat distortion in the distance. Let's look at it at 100%. It could be better, but I, that's not a problem with the lens, that's a problem with atmospheric conditions. Sometimes these extra long lenses aren't the best on a hot day. Here's another shot, another 600 millimeter shot. I think I have two in this segment. And look at, look at these bricks, the heat distortion. These, the lines of these bricks are not all squiggly like this. That's all heat distortion that you're seeing. But the players were a little bit closer and they actually look pretty good. Here's another shot, 440 millimeters this time. F6 is wide open at 440 of these two players fighting for the ball. Here's a Furman player. This is the uh, University of Tennessee at Chattanooga is in white and Furman is in purple. And this is a Furman player. This is a 180 millimeter shot. So lots of background in this one, a wide angle as it were on the 180 to 600. Still turned out really nice, I thought. 360 millimeter shot at F6 of one of Chattanooga's players running to kick the ball. And now this is probably in that same sequence, another 360 shot of the Furman player and the Chattanooga player fighting for the ball. Here's Chattanooga's number 18. She's chasing down the ball here. This is a 180 millimeter shot. The only trouble I had with using the 180 to 600 is sometimes when the players got really close, I actually needed it to be a little wider. And in that frame of mind, I like my Canon 100 to 500, probably better for soccer photography, but it was fun to try this one out and it did really well, although it could have been a little wider. And this is a 320 millimeter shot of one of the Furman players chasing after the ball and all the rest of the players chasing after her and the ball. And ah oh yes, this is the one where I had two shots in the same sequence that I decided to share. 320, both of these are 320 F6 ISO 360. Here's a 350 millimeter shot at F6 of a couple of players getting the ball down the field. And here's a 350 millimeter shot at F6. I don't really need, and, and really the, the shots that weren't all the way out at 600 millimeters or even 500 were the better ones just because of the distortion. If the players were close enough to shoot anywhere from 180 to about 350, the shots ended up much better just because of all the atmosphere I was having to shoot through. Another 350 millimeter shot in that same sequence of these two chasing the ball down the field. Love this shot, 240 millimeters of, I think that's number 10, kicking the ball across the field. I'll full screen that one for you. Really cool. Had nice light at my back. I wish it was a little bit lower in the sky, but otherwise the light was really good. Here's another 350 millimeter shot of number 13. And here's number three. This is a 180 millimeter shot. So, you know, the wider the shot is, the less compression there is and the, and the more of the background you can see. This is a 600 millimeter shot. Let's look at it at 100%. It looks pretty good, even with all the atmosphere. That looks pretty darn good. And look at that, this is 600 millimeters. This is the other end of the spectrum, 180 millimeters. Really cool shot of number 20 as she's working the ball down the field. This is a, a nice 180 millimeter shot of these two battling for the ball. Here's a 300 millimeter shot at F6. Here's another 300 millimeter F6 shot. This time number 10 is following the ball down the field. And number 10 again, she's caught up with the ball. It looks like she's fixing to pass it to another one of the players, another 300 millimeter F6 shot. 180 millimeters at F5.6 of two players really fighting over the ball. Here's one of the Furman players. She's about to pass the ball down the field. By this time, I'm it's the second half I'm, and I'm not sitting in the end zone. I'm on about the 35 yard line is where you would call it for American football. And this field is a dual purpose field. You can see American football lines on it and 
soccer lines or football lines on it, I guess. And you can see the steepness of the field where it's set up to drain. Right here is the top of the field and this player is almost to the top of the field, but these players in the background, you can't even see their feet. And I'm sitting down, as you could see in that photograph that I showed of me earlier that my friend Ray made. So the low angle shots, sometimes you end up losing feet in the distance, but they do, they just tend to have a better look than a shot made while you're standing. Here's a 210 millimeter shot at F5.6 of the Furman number 17 and Chattanooga's number four working on getting control of that ball. And Chattanooga's number seven, looks like she's about to kick that thing. A 310 millimeter shot at F6. Here's 370 millimeters at F6 as Chattanooga's number five is working the ball. Here's Chattanooga's number 18, 540 millimeter shot at F6.3, which is wide open. And that is my last shot. And I really appreciate you joining me for these. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one where soon I'll be using this lens for bird photography, which is why I bought it. Bye-bye.